Oh, why hello there. Welcome back to my channel. It's great to have you here with me once again. If it's your first time, check out the show. You know what to do. Smash that like button, hit subscribe, and of course, leave me a comment down below with your thoughts, feelings, and suggestions. I'd love to know what you have to say regarding this topic. I would love it. Oh my God. Just when we thought things were going back to normal on a Joe Biden podcast, Joe Biden reminded us that there's no such thing as normal in his world. And he blew that baby up. He blew it up in the most epic, captivating, can't take your eyes off this car crash way I've ever seen. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I gotta be honest, I'm bummed as a fan. I'm bummed. I would happily and quite easily say the Joe Biden podcast for a good stretch was the best urban hip hop whatever it is podcast out it was the best it was hands down the best you got the great insight into the industry you got some funny breakdowns when it comes to a particular rap records you got some interesting album reviews you got predictions that were fairly on point some of them crazily off point you got some disastrous sporting hot takes from mall you got some recommendations on tvs and documentaries and just really a great way to kind of waste three hours of your wednesday or your saturday afternoons evenings or mornings it was a great show it really was a great show and you thought there was no real messing this up it's just three friends with a bunch of other people maybe four maybe five friends who cares essentially three friends that we see on camera getting together twice a week and recording a podcast talking about all the current goings on within something within a scene and an industry that they know very well like the back of their hand but something changed if it was as far back as when joe budden decided to change the name of the podcast from i'll name this podcast later to the joe budden podcast whether it was him turning down the deal whatever was offered from spotify and not consulting his boys whether it was any other number of things but something definitely went awry and since then things have never been the same obviously you're for aware by now if you're clicking the video Mark rory and mall went on strike a few weeks ago maybe six maybe seven weeks ago and, they, and then they came back out of the blue. We didn't really expect it. I said in my original video that I did back then when they went on strike that I didn't ever see the show coming back, especially the way Joe was talking about things and how he interpreted certain situations. I just didn't see it happening. And I've basically been proved right. Actually, largely the JBP community, especially on Reddit, has been vindicated for all these months. There's been people on that subreddit that have been saying something's off. I think even as back as a year, which I didn't really believe at the time. I think I was a bit skeptical. I was like, mm, the, the vibe isn't the same but you know maybe it's you know growing pains and you know they're having to find their feet after the spotify debacle but someone definitely said from back then on the subreddit that no this is definitely off i think joe's snaking these guys i think something's going on behind the scenes that we're not aware of and now we've learned exactly what's going on courtesy of today's show or courtesy of yesterday's show that was promptly available and then taken down and then re-uploaded onto patreon and the teaser was put on your regular podcasting feed you know so they need to make some money out of the situation which i clearly understand but if you take what joe's saying at face value he seems to be really annoyed and aggrieved at the idea that his friends and podcast co-hosts and employees in his eyes were basically asking him to open up his books and show him where the money was going how much money the podcast was generating doing a bit of an audit right getting an idea on what the financials were and i guess in joe's world asking for more details and clarities of the deal that you signed or what deal the overall podcast and network has is paramount to you walking into his bedroom taking a shit on his chest smearing it on his chest and then walking out laughing like the joker for some reason i'm not sure sure why that correlates to be the same thing but he seemed to be really annoyed at the fact and he let it be known on his show he ranted he raved he accused them of not being great friends of not being loyal of being entitled insulted their relationship insinuated that um, at one point i think he even insinuated that rory was giving him colonizer record executive vibe which was odd considering parks was in the room but you know parks he doesn't really see him as anything he just sees him as his lap dog but there was such a weird rant such a weird onslaught that you would never really imagine you'd hear joe budden do especially when he's talking about rory and mole who are meant to be his best friends are meant to be somebody that he's really close with especially when you consider the amount of business they've done together the amount of 
bread they've broken to get rid of the amount of experience that they've had blah de, blah 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 you just wouldn't expect him to go off in that way when it comes to rory and mole but it happened and now we're in a position where essentially joe budden told rory on air he's fired i'm not so sure what the deal is with mole at the moment whether or not that door is still open but he definitely let rory know that he's not welcome back at the jbp studios and if you want some proof here you go he still feels like he has choices and options he feels like he's entitled to more rory you are in breach of your contract and from this point forward you are fired and you're not welcome back does anybody in here have a problem that i'm the person that has to say that maul i'm the person that has to say that the goal of you to think that you are observing the way that i am to think that I have to come to you about a problem I have with another man. So that basically confirms it. And it's just sad. Like I said, as a fan, it's just sad to see what's happened at the show. It's just sad to see how things have basically got to this point. And I think my problem initially with this entire situation, they gave us the impression that they were all really good friends. They also gave us the idea or the impression that they were all partners. Joe would go on these amazing rants about creators and equity and ownership and fighting for what's yours and having something to your name and all this malarkey. And you just assumed wrongly, I guess, in our in our eyes, especially in Rory and Mo's eyes, you just assumed that he was you know speaking from experience that he was trying to do the same thing with the deals that he was doing but over the years with the deals that were getting turned down and the things that happened behind the scenes and the little conflict we were having on the show as fans we clearly were seeing that there was clearly an issue behind the scenes or brewing that was mostly stemming from money but no one wanted to speak about it in the open now if i'm being fair i'd say joe maybe has a slight point in that maybe there was you know it was never actually broached to him the idea that you know maybe the financials weren't all the way correct and his co-hosts and you know quote-unquote partners felt as if that they won't be compensated properly and never had that really hard honest conversation around the table and tried to work out a way that would basically ensure that the show would continue in a cordial and great light maybe he's right but you would imagine as joe being the leader as joe being the head of the network that he would you know maybe put his ego to one side maybe put his pride to one side and just allow himself the ability to sit down as a boss as a ceo as a owner of a network and hear out what they have to say and work to find a solution because imagine if you own a network and you have shows that work and you have talent that have clearly shown that they have some value they add to your network would you want to keep them don't want to just keep making new shows just to prove a point that you can if something works already and they've got an in, you know they've already got a ingrained um fan base just make it work work out a resolution but it doesn't seem like he was willing to do so it doesn't seem like that was ever on the cards it doesn't seem like that was ever on the table it was always a thing of like hey rory and moe ask for more information on the financials or they ask for you know whatever whatever it may be however it's me it's going to be interpreted and joe's immediate reaction was to either give them a raise according to him or to say no with no real explanation as to why but this has been a fascinating fascinating insight into how the jbp fan base really does differ depending on what platform you're on if you go on reddit and you go and read some of the comments and replies on joe's twitter you would think that these guys you know were joe's children they really love him on twitter the Instagram comments are a little bit, you know, all over the place. The comments on Reddit are a lot more anti-Joe. And then the comments on Patreon are fairly balanced. But it's so odd how everybody's really interpreted this situation completely differently. But all in all, it's just a really unfortunate situation. It really is. And it just looks like there is no way back from now going forward. Joe said some really disrespectful stuff on this pod. Towards the end, he basically chastised and dismissed Rory's, you know, friendship and basically said he didn't ask him to come to the birth of his newest born son that's not any sort of in his eyes that's not any sort of indication that they're friends he didn't tell him to come he came on his own accord <sighs> some brutal stuff really 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 brutal stuff i think he even insinuated that he had people that were willing to you know beat up rory for the times that he kept threatening joe and that he had to kind of stand his uh, goons down because he didn't want anything to happen to rory 
that's essentially where he's been insinuated on the pod so i don't really see a way back for rory and mo so i guess going forward the only interesting part about this whole thing really now that we have to kind of look on the other side the only interesting part about this on the other side because we now have to move forward because you know this isn't going to go well they're not going to be able to patch this up again you know the bridges have been burned it is what it is hell of a ride as joe budden said the interesting part about this entire thing has been how accurate some of the jbp fans were regarding some of the conflict earlier on and also regarding the equity splits and the ownership or the lack thereof you know a, a number of times rory and mo were basically you know without saying it were essentially mocking the fans for ever suggesting that their business wasn't all the way correct for calling into question their ownership of the podcast or calling into question whether or not they were partners and uh, whether or not they were partners or just glorified employees and joe Biden basically said in no uncertain terms that he's the boss and this is my show which i'm not really a fan of personally i think if you know just because Rory and Maul didn't join on episode one, but they joined, you know, in the hundreds or in the low double digits, but they helped to build the show to exactly the point of place where it is now at the moment. It's we're not just only here because of Joe. He might have he might think that, but we're not only here because of him. We're obviously here because of him and how he interacts with his friends that intangible thing right the kind of chemistry that they have to, so, so to dismiss their entire contribution to the podcast because they weren't there from episode one is a little bit disingenuous it's disingenuous in the extreme actually but it also goes to prove that everything that the fans were saying for months and months and months has been proven to be correct and you know who's laughing all the way to the bank you know who's laughing in his Lambo truck? You know who's giggling as he sips Hennessy on stream? Academics. Academics was calling this from the very beginning when he was going through his back and forth with Rory and you know then including Maul for good effect. He said from the beginning that, that these guys are workers, that these guys are not who they think they are. They like to talk big game about everyone else's deals, but they don't even have their business all intact. And unfortunately for my guys, Rory and Moore, Academics has had the last laugh. Academics is corny. I don't really enjoy his content, but you can't deny the guy's had his last laugh. He has been vindicated in this regard. They tried to sun him, they tried to play the guy, and he essentially was able to turn his entire I think public persona around to a certain extent I think most people still think he's a bit of a lame but overall the vitriol that was kind of aimed towards academics when he was an everyday struggle to how he's viewed now is completely different in the space of what four or five years he's been able to do that and in the process he's been he's gotten richer and richer and richer to the point where supposedly he signed allegedly a podcast deal with Barstool Sports I've read on the forums and stuff people have been saying alleging it's either Barstool Sports or Spotify a multi-million dollar podcasting deal he's just about to start recording his new show with Complex the on the sticks the new season of that he's doing really well that guy you like him or like him or hate him he's doing really really well and he is enjoying dancing on the grave of Rory Amal especially because now in some weird convolution of time we've now in this odd timeline where joe has basically eviscerated marissa taken out rory and also taken out Maul. and in the process he's now become axe mentor when if you remember clearly when they first started the reason why i would assume rory and Maul kind of went in on axe so much besides him being somebody that he probably didn't think was cool it was a tete-a-tete -tete that joe kept having with academics in everyday struggle joe wouldn't really hide his displeasure at academics's musical insights and knowledge and his opinion on certain artists and his naivety to the industry joe didn't hide his displeasure at some of the things he said how he conducted himself his relationship with six nine joe was fairly disrespectful to academics for a very long time and i'm sure that probably added to the fact that rory and mo stepped in and kind of you know added to the jokes and kept kicking him when he was down because it was fun to do so there was a period of time where it was just fun to poke at academics the same way it was fun to maybe poke at someone like russ but when they kick back or when they fight back or when they send their goons over to you to beat you up like you know rusted with um what's his face um guap dad you have to step back and say you know what maybe this guy isn't for play play and i think unfortunately for rory when he allegedly sent those goons over to academics home he just wrote his own death note but i have to be honest as well and say if i was rory and Joe was still friends with academics considering the stuff he said about Rory and considering the role he might have played or didn't play allegedly crumbling of Rory's engagement I would be more than tight I would be really pissed off I'd be furious I maybe want to fight Joe just because I can't fight Ak that's how deep it would go especially if I thought we were actually friends and the fact that Joe's now picked academics out of an option of either choosing rory or more he's basically gone with ak is a crazy timeline i never thought we'd be here and what is it because of money 
mostly because he, he he thinks he can get money with this kid or because he actually loves him i'm not sure what's going on but we live in a weird timeline where now suddenly joe has turned into being academics's mentor it's so 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 bizarre and then along the whole entire show parks in the background mm -hmm, are hiring co-signing giggling everything joe was saying was disgusting disgusting but again no surprise we've all worked with somebody like a parks right the kind of person where in the staff room you're you're there sort of having a little gossip and saying how much you hate the manager and then the next morning you overhear parks and the manager talking and laughing and giggling about their weekend and you're like hold on i was just talking to you but like you don't know where that guy stands but for real what you do know is that they're always going to be about the check he even said it in certain terms he even said during the podcast i don't necessarily care about all this crap because my business is straight or something like that and the odd thing about the whole parks affair as well if you remember correctly according to the story that we've heard parks was actually present when joe said the famous line the podcast is none of your business tomorrow and he still expected the guys to come in the next day like everything was cool he saw no issue with somebody that you built the podcast with telling him that to his face because effectively if he said that to rory and mo that means he said that to parks too but he didn't see any issue with that and he was taken aback when they didn't come in the show must go on people have bills to pay it's like huh you've got a podcast you do with your friends you couldn't take off one day to sort out the issue and get the business right and get the vibes right so you could come back the next day it's not that difficult to do they could have changed their recording days pretty easily they could have sorted it out joe could have you know acted like an actual boss of a of a network and put his personal feelings to one side and just spoken to his colleagues or spoken to people that he works with and that's another thing too maybe the contracts don't say rory and Ma are meant to be partners but can't you do right by your friends just because they're your friends for this one rare occasion because most of the business i'm assuming joe's gonna be doing going forward are gonna involve people that he basically just wants to work with and freelance with or whatever it may be but why can't you just do that with your friends on a one-off occasion why can't you just bend the rules a little bit slightly and just give them a bone why can't that happen just for the betterment of the show for the betterment of the network why can't that work out i don't really know but i'd love to know your thoughts and opinions regarding it um do you think it's over it obviously is over <laughs> but what do you think is gonna happen is this can, can it be turned around will we ever see rory or mole on the jbp ever again will parks ever get joe's pp out of his mouth please let me know in the comments down below i'd love to know your thoughts and opinions peace